This video is not uh, what you should set your train settings to. It's a what the train settings actually do and how you should think about setting them. Uh, to start with, uh, let me explain how uh, the content of trains has evolved uh, over over the years. Uh, many moons ago, content creators started making assets for trains, uh, track trees, trains, rocks, roads, you name it. Um, there are many thousands of content creators that have done many, many things. And the majority of it looks really good. Uh, if not now, it did for its time. Uh, trains wouldn't be where it is today without the fantastic uh, content creators and much loved content community. Uh, so now, as many people know, creating 3D assets isn't something that just uh, anyone can do. It takes a lot of time to create just one model and prototypical assets which a simulator like trains requires takes even longer as some assets like locomotives need a lot of research done even before starting to create the 3D models and the scripts etc. Uh, we have over 388,000 assets on the download station for users to create routes and sessions with for free all thanks to our content community. Due to the enormous amount of time it takes to create an asset from start to finish, most of these assets are created in a, a content creator's personal time. Uh, so over the years we have slowly introduced harsher submission rules to help mould the content that the creators submit. Uh, this is due to a lot of previous submissions having poor LOD which stands for level of detail. This does mean their con this doesn't mean their content uh, detail is poor. Quite far from it. It's it's uh, the level of detail or a lod is a term in game development where an asset has a a high detailed mesh. So I'm just scrolling down the screen now just to show you. Uh, so let's take uh, the the wheels for example. Uh, so there's a high detailed 3D mesh and it's called say LOD0 as it says on the screen which you would see say for the first 50 meters from the camera and then usually several other detailed meshes called LOD1, LOD2, LOD3, uh, LOD1 being a medium quality and it would sit between say 50 to 200 meters from the camera uh, so you know that's a bit further than that but somewhere around there would be LOD1 and then you might take LOD2 which would be a low quality uh, model or mesh and it would sit between 200 to 500 meters from the camera and then you'd finish with a LOD3 which would be um, something very low detail like this uh, which would be a rectangle or perhaps you know a, a rectangle here and a, a couple of triangles or whatnot and it, it could even be a 2D billboard uh, and for those you can think of it as an image if you don't know what a billboard means or you're not familiar with it so that would be LOD3 so it keeps going down in in different LOD levels uh, and LODs are obviously obviously can take a lot of time to make um, because you have to do several instances of your your mesh um, or it did up until now, the 3D modeling software actually does a great job of it and um, we'll show you a little demonstration of that later so you can further understand uh, level of detail and, and 3D mesh creation which all links into the train settings which we are going to talk about. Um, so don't worry. Unlike most games who uh, or game developers who make all their art in-house and have correct level of detail for all their game assets uh, and have specific pipelines and requirements uh, for their artists to work within um, to make their highest game settings run you know, great for everyone, Trains operates in uh, a different fashion as I've just explained. This means in the current Trains any route can be made up of fantastic optimized assets which have the best level of detail um, because the content creator added all the the LOD levels in for that asset and the route can also include thousands of assets that only have 
a high detailed mesh and no other LOD levels. So when you're drawing several thousands of the highest detailed assets for many miles without any lower level detail to fall back on, the more you draw, uh, the worse the performance going to become. So this is where choosing the correct train settings for your machine per route can be very beneficial. Uh, let's let me take you on a quick demonstration on uh, assets without any level of detail and then I'll show you one with a better level of detail and then I'll actually take you into um, 3D Max and show you how uh, the best level of detail would be achieved and then we'll run through some train settings um, to help you get the the most out of each of the settings so if we jump into trains let's load this up and let's filter on our locomotives and we'll take the first aura and one that I can find where are we? This one? Uh, yeah, we can try that one. So you can go to preview asset and it'll bring up a little window which is fairly handy and it has, stop that spinning, it tells you the amount of triangles that this uh, asset is made up on, the amount of draw calls which generally can be the amount of materials used in a text uh, or textures perhaps uh, and it tells you that this is 12,000 roughly 12,000 triangles being rendered on the screen just for this one asset at this distance as we start to scroll back it's still telling you the amount of triangles it's rendering at that distance away from the camera so oh, you can see it's dropped now so there's a lot that's kicked in somewhere where it's gone I'm not going to render 12,000 I'm going to render 7,598 now when it's this far away from the camera and my draw calls are dropped which is great so these these things that are dropping are good as you get further away from the camera but at this distance from the camera which you know is barely a few pixels it's way too much to be rendering and this is this is one of our assets I'd say it, it was uh, you know it was done many moons ago but it's still it's still one of our assets that isn't uh, optimized enough so when we're talking about assets that aren't optimized and they need to be le LOD level 0 which you would see at this level so that would be level 0 then as you start to move back you want it to be moving on to level 1 level 2 and, and the polygons and the material counts need to be dropping so that when you get lots of these on the screen it's not affecting your performance uh, so if we if we load up another we'll load up the first one here by another content creator and this is kind of in the same boat as what we just showed then but you can see that this one's 43,000 polygons nice close up with lots of detail which is great that's what you want close up and what we can do is instead of having this on auto we can change this to say what it would look like at 10,000 meters away from the camera so there you go there's a lot of LOD that's been dropped off that and it's gone from 43 right down to 5,000 but the difference is at 10,000 meters away which is probably more than I can scroll it's still using 5,000 triangles when it it could be using uh, like 12 or even less a billboard if you really wanted to but it could be a rectangle at that size and you'd never tell the difference so this is where LOD really plays a big part in uh, asset creation and I'll, I'll try and do a video on just LOD uh, later on so we can actually get to performance but I just want you to get the idea of why we have such uh, a fairly hefty amount of settings to allow you guys to put them at the right uh, notches or detail so that you can get the best out of trains uh, using the, the, the many many pieces of content we have over the years so if we go into we touch on this a little bit more if we go into 3D Max uh, Studio and we look at the model 
this model here, which is made up of 10,000 polygons. At this level, it's great. And this is less than 50 meters. And then this first one here is 50 meters, the blue one. The next one's 200 and the next one's 500. So you can get an idea of how far away we are from the model itself. But what we want to be doing is we'll just go quickly into the five into 500 meters away after we change this to show you the detail that won't matter once you change your LODs. So if we quickly go down to uh, an option that the, new, the latest 3D Max has and we go to Pro Optimizer, we tick Keep Textures and we go Calculate. At right now, it's 100% of the polygons are still showing or haven't been modified. If we drop that down to 10, and up here it says polygons at 10,700. If we dropped it down to 10%, you can see everything's now got a lot less detail, but we're now at 918 polygons. And as you zoom out, which we're, we're just past the 200 meter mark, you can you can kind of see the difference but as you get to the 500 meter mark which is even further than where we are somewhere around here you're not really you're not really seeing too much detail and you're not seeing those uh those obscurities that you see when you're really close up so yeah, sure, there's a big chunk missing, but when you're way back here, you can't, you just can't notice it. It's too far away for the eye to see. So what you want to be doing is you want to be dropping that as low as possible when you're far away from the camera. 5% gives us 451. And it, you know, it still looks like the train did when you're, when you're close up. You probably get away with nearly 2%. And it'll just drop in in detail when it gets to a certain distance away from the camera. So that's that's what we have to make like game developers. This is their pipeline, and and we we have to try and help our content creators who do brilliant high detail work uh, to understand that we need to get ugly, really low detailed lods because they're not they're not going to be seen from the camera. So enough harping on about level of detail because that is the base of any type of settings especially with trains let's get rid of that one and let's jump into the game itself uh, if for anyone who wants to have a look uh, make your first train asset is a good demo online on the trains wiki uh, it's a bit outdated but it still has some of the fundamental things like I said I'll try and do another video up for it though so you can understand LOD better so now let's go and edit a session. No, let's create our own session. Doesn't matter when you're going to change the settings, you can change them whenever you want. Um, I'm just going to create a new session in Kickstarter County, and that will be my base to show you um, the settings in, in trains. So right now, uh, we have everything turned up full, and it's uh, a, bit, a little bit jittery because I'm obviously capturing as well. So let's get to here and we go main menu settings and video settings is where we'll, we'll stay. So maximum draw distance is a big factor in how the scenery detail scales, which I'll explain in a second. But the maximum draw distance basically explains or the purpose of it is, if I can just jump up on this mountain somewhere here, pretty sure there's a mountain. Oh, I missed it. Let's go wandering and find the mountain. Here he is. So what the draw distance actually does is, I know this map is roughly six kilometers long. So if you go out to your, your map, you can see the grids are 720 by 720 meters. So if we roughly say they're a thousand, it's uh, it will go this way: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eighty uh, eight, sorry, kilometers long. So if we look out over the map, 
we can see the hills on the other side because if it's eight kilometers long and we've got our draw distance set to 15 kilometers, which is 1,000, uh, 15,000 meters, then we're obviously going to see the entire map. So I will demonstrate it and I'll drop it down to four meters, uh, four kilometers, and you'll see the, the mountains in the background are gone. And as we start to move closer, they'll come back. So the draw distance on its own is rendering the terrain and the textures that are associated with the terrain. So that's what you use the draw distance uh, initially for, but the draw distance plays a big part in scenery detail as well. So I'll explain that next. We'll leave it at 4,000 meters. Scenery detail is uh, each time the scenery detail level the engine calculate each time you change the scenery detail level so you've got low normal high and ultra each time you change that uh, it recalculates a percentage of uh, certain aspects of trains like trees track scenery and particle effects to be a percentage of the maximum draw distance so for example if we set it to low and we've got 4,000 meters as our draw distance, you'll see all the scenery is starting to come back in, okay? So what that means is we've set it to low and it's saying of the 4,000 uh, meters that you're drawing of terrain, you've got scenery detail set low, so we're only going to make it 20% of we're going to only draw trees for 20% of that 4,000 meters. So for one kilometer, we're going to draw trees and then we're going to cut them off. Because we've set our scenery detail low, it's 20% of the total draw distance. So that's how scenery works. It takes a certain percentage of the total draw distance at each individual scene detail setting. So we can, if we set it normal, then trees will, will render out a little bit further. This goes for track trees, uh, scenery and particle effects, but I'm just using trees as an example because there's lots of them on the route and you can see them. So again, that's about you know 50%. And then as we crank that up more and more, I think ultra becomes about 90%. So you probably won't see it render all the way out there, but it gets, you, know, you can see them up here. It gets, it gets pretty close. but um, yeah, it's about 90% for trees. And then uh, the others have their own percentages as well. But that's uh, that's scenery detail. So de scenery detail is a percentage of the max draw distance, uh, just to give you an idea of what those two do. So you're going to have to work out what you want to set these to. Uh, so that's, you know, that's why they're there, obviously. But keeping in mind with the max draw distance, when you've got a really long route and you're trying to render 15 kilometers of that route, you can't do it in Kickstarter County, obviously, because it's only 8 kilometers. But at certain angles, if you're not right up on a hill, you might be looking at two or three lines of, of pixels across the screen for a few kilometers. So if you, if you want to reduce that uh, from 15 kilometers down to 6 and take a look, and see what the difference is on some routes that you're actually using, it could be quite um, insignificant having it from 6K to 15K because it's drawing a couple of lines on your screen. So it's definitely worth trying to tweak that per route just to make sure that you're getting the optimum setting. Also with your scene detail as well, but you know this one's more of a, if you want to fill the scene up, you drag it all the way up. If you are happy driving along, and you only want half the scene to show, uh, half the train to have seen on it, then you know set it to a medium point. The tree detail, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly easy to understand. Basically, if you set it to, let's have a look. I'm probably at a good position here. If you set the tree detail to low, oh, sorry, that's post processing. You'll see that. The billboards, the trees are made up of 3D meshes and 
2D billboards, which are, as I explained earlier, just images. So as you're setting it to a low level, you can see that as I move forward a little bit, these trees are changing. If I go slowly, you'll notice it that the trees change from a 3D image, a 3D mesh to a 2D billboard. And that's the transition that, that Speed Tree actually makes that we use. And setting the tree detail depend that determines how far away from the camera this transition happens. Now it's definitely a performance thing because rendering lots of 3D objects over just rendering 2D billboards is uh is a big performance increase. So it depends how nice you want to see your trees far away. And right now I've only got it set to about 150 meters from the camera, which is the low setting but if we crank that all the way up to the ultra setting it's about 500 meters away from the camera you'll see lots of the 3d trees start to show as you can see here these still look like 2d billboards so it's round about there where it's cutting off and the rest of them have, have become 3d uh, trees and then back there you get your 2d stuff going on so that's your tree detail uh, you decide what you want your trees to look like by by setting that uh, another setting is process objects behind the camera. This one adds uh, objects behind your camera to the pipeline to make sure they're ready to go for rendering, but it doesn't actually render them behind the camera. Uh, but it doesn't get this effect. So if I'm turning around and you'll see everything kind of pop in again as I start to turn the camera around, the trees pop in, any sorts of objects that were behind the camera start to pop in again. If you decide that you don't like that and your machine can handle it, you can put process objects behind the camera on and now I'll be able to, once they come into view from the camera, they will just stay there and they'll render straight away. So you won't get any of that popping in anymore. Obviously, the you know each setting you turn up or turn on pays cost and uh, as I explained earlier for quite a long time, sorry about that, the level of detail um, if it all was correct, you, you'd probably get um, obviously better performance, but we've, we've uh, got some assets in there that are probably rendering at high detail right over the hills. So uh, you're going to have to find a certain uh, setting or a certain amount of settings that is adequate for each of the routes that you're using. Uh, the other thing that you can use as well in here before I jump out into the launcher and show you the settings in the launcher are, let me just uh, turn that one off and uh, you don't get the option in Surveyor. Let me just jump out of Surveyor. There's a preset that you can actually set to quickly change your settings if you're uh, just wanting to get a bit more performance in certain areas of the route if it's performing bad or uh, if it's performing really well and you think I'll up the performance. You don't have to fiddle around with what I just showed you. You can just use uh, some of the presets that we have up in the top corner here. So, uh, probably won't see a massive difference, but when you click this, you get a low, medium and high setting that we've um, set. So low brings in the terrain, it brings in the scenery and it's actually just automatically sets these things for you. So then if you want to say that's running really good for you, you go yeah I'm happy with that, frame rate's good, you can jump it to medium and then you know it increases the settings slowly and high does another jump altogether as well. So that can quickly increase or decrease your performance depending on what you set it to. And then if you just click on custom, it'll take you straight to the settings and you can tweak them yourself. And if you do end up changing it, then that'll show that there's a custom, uh, well, it should show there's a custom tweak. There we go, it's updated. So it shows that now you've set it to custom. So that's the in-game settings that you can uh, manipulate yourself. If we uh hang around in here and we get to a certain position i'm going to show you the shadows now 
and I've got two builds that I will load up. Just want to get to a point where you'll see some shadows. There's that's not a bad spot. Okay. So we load up this version of trains, and obviously there's going to be um, lesser performance. Now I'm loading two versions of the game up, but hopefully my machine will be okay. And load into Kickstarter County, fossil fuels, <coughs> excuse me. And this version that I'm currently looking at, if you go to the trains launcher in train settings, and under performance you get another bunch of options and this one I've set shadow quality to low and the main shadow resolution to 2048. Now let me just first explain what each of the shadow quality does and the shadow resolution and then I'll show you the examples of each of them in trains itself. So obviously if you turn shadows off you're not going to get any shadows. Uh, just a quick tip, making any changes to the shadows will ask you to reset, reset trains. Uh, you'll need to shut down the application and load it up again because it'll need to recalculate the shaders. It'll only do that if you change the shadow quality. If you leave it the same and change other settings, you should be fine. Right. If you set it to low, which was what we have, uh, then what shadows are rendered are individual meshes, cast shadows and then stitched meshes do not cast shadows so some meshes uh, are not casting shadows it's because the engine has stitched them together for performance reasons that's if you're not seeing some cast shadows for example uh, I think right in front of us we can see that the trains casting shadows but you know, lots of this stuff isn't it's because trains has stitched all these meshes together and at a low setting it's not going to uh, render shadows. We actually have two versions of the game running. No wonder it was running rather average. Let's close down one of them. Uh, three versions of the game, sorry. What's happening here? No, I don't want to save it. Right. That should be a lot happier. Yeah, there we go. I was running why it was having a bit of a hissy fit. Okay. Uh, examples. Right. That's on low. Stitch meshes are not being rendered. Where if we jump into the same location, uh, let me think it is over this way. You'll see that the shadows are rendering. This is on ultra, this version, and the other one's on low. So that's the difference that we're going to make today. Uh, shadows for low shadows, shadows will show for a distance of uh, one kilometer. So if we look back this way, and we go somewhere around here, um, you're only going to see that the shadows will show for a kilometre, and a kilometre may be further than where those 3D um, trees and 2D trees meet, but also on low, shadows don't uh, happen when you've got billboards so speed tree billboards don't cast shadows so you only see it on the 3d objects uh, and I'm showing you the wrong one <laughs> this one is what I should have been talking about so you will not see shadows on the 2d billboards which you which is showing here now so shadows will cast for a kilometer uh, if we get some buildings that cast them you'll probably see them out for a kilometer so that building obviously isn't stitched and as we move back the kilometer is quite a fair way away yeah so there it is around about there you can see that the shadow just starts to move out from there so that that's about a kilometer but the on low it's a kilometer and the billboards for the speed trees will not cast shadows. So you'll see that the shadows go away when the billboards pop in. As for this one, which is ultra, and the billboards and 3D trees and everything else still cast shadows, which you can see. And then all the buildings as well will be casting shadows and you won't see them pop out 
for a very long distance because it's ultra. I think the distance is actually five kilometers where the shadow is, so I, you'd be hard pressed to see where the shadow ends. Uh, also, uh, for medium shadows, the terrain starts to cast shadows. So, in uh, I think in low, the terrain doesn't cast shadows, so you, you don't actually see its self shadow or anything like that. In medium, the terrain does cast shadows. And obviously high and ultra. So, for example, there you go. The terrain's casting shadows on itself in ultra. Uh, it also does it in medium and high. Then in high, stitched meshes start to cast shadows. And obviously in ultra, because that's why you're seeing everything casting shadows, including when we were over here at the start, it wasn't. So these are stitched meshes. The, the game's determined that it's going to stitch them all together. And in high and ultra, it'll stitch them. It'll uh, cast shadows on stitch meshes. Uh, and obviously the shadow quality gets better and the shadow resolution gets better as you turn it up. So higher is better again and ultra gives you the best uh, resolution and highest uh, highest quality of shadow. So that's your shadows. Um, keep in mind I'm running two versions of the game and it's, it's still running fairly good in Kickstarter County. So uh, yeah, a lot of these assets are probably not, not too bad with LOD. Uh, let's shut down this version of the game and close it down. So that was a bit of a shadow comparison. Then uh, we can look at some post processing. If we jump out of this and go back into creating a session. So I want to just change the time of day. So create a session. And post-processing allows you to have low, high, or ultra detail, which you can change in the game settings here. And let me get the sun kind of rising. Come on, sun. Too far. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's probably a good spot. Okay, so right now we have our post-processing on high. If we turn that to ultra, we'll turn everything up. You can see that we get this um, god ray effect with the sun. Now, if you turn it on ultra, the difference uh, that ultra gives you is this uh, god ray effect with the sun. That's because we've they're presets, so we've enabled the God Rays for Ultra Detail. Then you get other settings as you go. You, get, you lose settings as you go down from there with our presets. So if we change to High, and we turn that on, you obviously lose the God Rays. And I think that's about all you lose from the, the High. Uh, turning it down to Low. You then uh, lose a few other things, which I'll show you an example of. So let's take, you probably see it from the trees. When we go from low and ultra, you'll notice, uh, actually there's a better way of doing this. Train settings, no, developer settings, of course. I don't have it turned on, I'll need to reset. What you can do to play around with post-processing, you can go and do train settings. Uh, dev, enable advanced debug tools, and you'll need to reset the launcher. Show launch window. Oh, you need to reset the game for it to show. So we exit that, and we load it back up. And now you'll have an added, uh, a, f a few extra things in your developer list that you can play around with, but they're, they're really uh, for developer options, you know, if you don't if you don't have much experience in this area, you probably don't want to play around with them, as the name suggests. It's de development stuff. So go back into our session, and you can play around with post processing in real time. So you go down to show post processing settings, and at the moment, I have it set to low. Let's move him out of the way. And this will give you an idea of what the different settings uh, provide for you. 
So if we look at this scene, we bring back our post processing settings and we go load to ultra, you can see what um, the changes are there from low to ultra and what you're seeing is a something called uh, screen space ambient occlusion SSAO that's that uh, darkness around the objects that you're seeing that's an actual post processing effect uh, that is used and it, it just adds uh, shadowing around 3D objects and it, it does have a good effect in most cases so it is good to have on um, it adds a bit more depth to a scene and then uh, you lose uh, what else do you lose in low uh, the depth of field so in the background there if we can get a good spot you can see the depth of field in the back is still being rendered so it's a bit blurred if you actually turn that off you'll see the difference so we go off disable see how there's no blurring anymore you can see it fairly clearly so if you want to turn on ultra or meet high or low you'll get some depth of field going in there and blurs the background like it's a bit of a um, obviously depth of field or a, uh, not a haze like a, it's definitely a blur effect and ultra gives you a near blur effect as well so if we if we go up close to a tree you'll see it uh, it starts to blur the tree as well so for when you're taking those screenshots it has a nice effect um, so the closeness of that gets blurred whereas something far uh, medium it, in field of view isn't blurred and then the, the background is blurred again whereas I think your high or low doesn't have yeah so high and low doesn't have the close blur for your presets so they're the difference in your post processing and it also each one of the low high and ultra has some tone mapping so as you turn that off you can see that the colors um, drop down a little bit as well it's it's all preference a lot of post processing so if you don't like some effects you can definitely go to manual and you can add in the effects you want you might want some bloom in there and you can play around with the settings uh, you might want to make it all grayscale and fly around in old school TV uh, there's plenty of post processing effects there we're going to be adding new ones as well so you can play with whatever effects you like as long as you set it to manual or you know set it to the, one of the presets so that's post processing uh, then it comes to let's have a look at our water I think I'll need to load up another version of the game for a comparison but what you see here is the ultra water so you're getting this nice specular effect which to be honest is actually on the low setting as well but you don't get this nice reflective water uh, which the high setting gives you um, and you'll also uh, the difference between high and ultra in your uh, water settings here so water quality low high ultra uh, high still gives you this render uh, this reflection sorry but it doesn't actually uh, render certain things in the reflection like coronas and particle effects and that sort of thing so you it's up to you what you want to set it to ultra looks really nice um, also the route creator if you zoom in has certain um, effects applied on the water so that will change the way the reflection um, specular especially looks on the water but that's a route per route thing you can't actually change that unless it's your route obviously uh, if we load up our other version of the game or an, our other instance of the game which is set to low uh, I'll show you what you I guess miss out on if you don't have the reflections enabled back into fossil fuels I guess we can just drive the session loading 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 so we're on that part of the map yeah over here 
and you know that's that's what you get without uh, without reflections. You still get the specular, like I was saying, but you definitely don't get those nice reflections in the water. And it, it uses a def the the color that the content creator has chosen for this map as well, uh, so the water color will change. Uh, and obviously the texture or the, the the kind of effect you get on there for the water, but you won't get those reflections that ultra or um, high give you. So that's water. Let's close this one down. Uh, the next option we'll discuss, or the settings we'll discuss in the launcher settings. Uh, I, I didn't mention what my main shadow resolution is. Basically, the shadows render out uh, into a a texture. Getting a bit detailed here. Sorry, you can probably tune out for a second if this doesn't concern you. Uh, and if you've got it to 2048, which is a 2048 by 2048 texture, it will render out to. That's the resolution you're going to get uh, for your textures. If you set it to 4096, it'll render out to a 4096 by 4096 texture. Uh, which will give you a higher resolution of the shadows, which when we talk resolution, we're talking about the outlines of the shadow here. If we zoom in, you can see how they are uh, got little jaggy edges. Um, the higher you set that to, the better the resolution is going to be, and uh, that's about as good a resolution as you're going to get in trains at the moment because that's all we allow you to go to. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's... Ooh, that object's popped out. That's pretty crisp. So that's what that setting is. The next one is texture detail. Right. Low, normal, or high for texture detail. Setting this to low means that every os asset that uh, has been loaded into trains, regardless of what resolution texture it has, it may have a massive 4096 texture. For instance, let's just assume this one had a 4096 texture being used. Because we've set it to low, then that texture doesn't matter that it's so big. The game says, you've set it to low, I'm only going to load in a 1024 version of that 4096 texture. Now this, uh, this is because uh, textures, when they're loaded in, get MIP mapped. Um, MIP map see what comes up and here's an example it's not a great example but this is the mip map so if the model says i have a you know let's assume this was 4096 by 4096 sized texture uh, the game will go well let's make a 4096 one a 2048 one a 1024 one a 512 mip map version of the highest resolution texture so when you set it to low it goes Right, just because you've got this big texture, I'm not I'm not just going to use it. The user's told me he wants a low setting, so I'm always going to use this low texture. So it, it only loads in the uh, texture at a certain resolution is what that texture detail uh, is when you set it to. So 1024 by 1024 textures only for low, 2048 by 2048 for normal and 4096 for high uh, and that'll depending on what you set it to increase or decrease the amount of RAM being used um, for loading in each of the routes and their assets. The next is post processing which we've talked about and water quality we talked about. Any aliasing is a very uh, common thing in games always has been or for a very long time now. Uh, it, it basically if I can show an example it gets rid of the jagged edges on things. I guess anything's really an example if you zoomed into a building. But because mine's on 8 and I've got near post-processing blurring going on, it's going to be really hard for me to show you what it's talking about. This is a good example. These would be really jaggy if uh, if it was set, if it was turned off. I think our default is times 2, which it is. So you're always going to have some sort of anti-aliasing. But I mean, if you if you really want to know what it is, um, anti-aliasing. Uh, where's a good image that shows it? That one's not too bad. 
maybe here. What's this one? So, so yeah, you can see a little bit. They're a little bit jaggy, and anyway, this thing just makes things smooth. Uh, but uh, it's not a biggie anymore. Most people know what that is. Uh, and the last couple are the detailed update rate. This is going to determine how much data you're pushing to your GPU. So if you set it to low, it'll only push a certain amount of data to your GPU. So if you're working in Surveyor, for instance, and you're flying around the map and it's trying to load in lots of stuff, and mine isn't having any problem at all, but uh, just say you are having you know, lots of stuff pop in really close to the camera and it looks like it's really slow, it could be because you've got this set to low because it's only sending a certain amount of data to the GPU to process at any one moment. If you increase that to high or ultra, it'll send more data, which means it'll speed up the rate in which it actually processes a lot of this data and gets it on the screen. If you uh, obviously set it to high and you're finding that you're running into performance issues, you may want to think about setting it lower again. But you know that's what that setting does. It sends a certain amount of data at low, high, and ultra to the GPU. Uh, use multi-render th multi threads. I would say leave this on if you're not having any problems like the game jittering because obviously your drivers can handle multi-threading. There's a lot of drivers probably still out there that can't handle multi-threaded uh, games because a lot of the drivers are written for single-threaded games. But if you aren't having problems, leave it on. If you are having problems, maybe switch it off and just test and see if it helps. Uh, especially if you know you're getting a crash or something, it definitely might help. But that's that's mainly uh, uh, all multi-threaded uh, functionality does. But it's probably best to leave it on unless you're having problems. Uh, use texture streaming. Uh, each this one is a uh, what is this one? Each asset has a number of textures. The textures are loaded into the game as something we call MIP maps, which I just explained. So again, you're going to get those uh, highest resolution texture. And I will jump back to here because it is quite a good one to understand MIP maps. The game is going to take an asset and it's going to load in the highest resolution texture. And then it's going to generate uh, the lower resolution textures from the highest one. That's what the game will do. And then if you have back to trains. If you have this setting, use texture streaming turned on. What it will do is let's take this tree for instance, or a building. For some reason I use building for the trees. This building here, let's say, has a texture of 4096, and at this resolution, we don't really care that we're using the highest resolution texture because we can hardly see it. So if the use texture streaming is on what it does is it passes this object to the gpu along with the required texture it needs to render at this resolution from the, or distance from the camera so just say it's using 2, 20, 256 by 256 which is a low resolution texture at this level it goes look just have that texture which is what texture streaming turned on does it says have the lower resolution texture which saves uh, memory on the GPU so the, the, the lower resolution textures you're sending to the, to the GPU or the smaller textures you're sending to the GPU the less memory you're using as you zoom in closer though if you've got uh, used texture stream on it's having to then resend the next higher texture resolution to the GPU to apply and render so right now, if I'm really close and I've got that use texture streaming switched on, it would say, oh, hey, last time we were this far away and I sent you the 512 version of the texture, now the, the person's gotten closer or the user's gotten closer, I need to send you the 1024 by 1024 texture. So there's a cost of sending these textures to the GPU all the time. If you turn this off, however, like I have, it's going to regardless of how far away you are from the object it's always going to send the highest resolution texture it can to the gpu which is going to use a lot more vram up on your gpu or memory but 
you you remove the cost of having to resend these textures every time you get closer and closer to the object. So the trade-off is you're using lots more memory, but you're not using you, it's not costing you the performance of re-uploading the textures. Now you want to make sure that you've got uh, a video card with a fair bit of memory to be able to turn that off. But again, it's an option that you can turn off or, or you can uh, leave on. You need to work out what works best for you. The next one is use physics simulation. This is using PhysX. Uh, right now, Trains uses it for particle collision on uh, most of the bridges and anything else that particles are going to collide with, including terrain if they manage to sweep over that way uh, or tunnels. So it will particles will collide with um, the world if you have that switched on. Uh, and it's one of those things that you might want to try switching on or not. It can um, have a big performance increase if there's a lot of particles on your screen because it will try and process all those particles especially you know if you've got a world full of particles you're gonna you're gonna see a, a difference in frame rate so yeah you might want to think about turning that one on and off based on maybe the scenario you're playing or the session you're trying to create but uh, again have a look at that and see if it works for you if it doesn't then uh, switch it off the process behind uh, camera we've already talked about and I think that's about it so if there's other settings that um, you want me to explain or you want more information on the ones I have explained uh, please send in a uh, your comments and suggestions on the forum otherwise uh, thanks for watching and we'll we'll uh, see you at the next video cheers